Has God ever surprised you with an undeserved blessing? Hi, I'm Dr. Laverne Tolbert. Welcome to Sunday School Made Simple, your online community of Christian education teachers and students of the Word. And thank you for joining us as we continue to explore the Word of God using UMI's Precepts for Living Digital Commentary. This video summarizes the lesson and you'll find more information on PreceptsDigital.com. We look forward to seeing you there. Let's pray. Father, you deserve all the glory in our lives and we bless you. Thank you for the ways that you surprise us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God wants to restore his people, doesn't he? Yes, and so this is what our lesson is about today. And when I was growing up, I remember we used to sing a song in church on Sunday mornings. The choir marched in wearing their robes. They were so beautiful and majestic and they would sway down the aisle and sing, we're marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching onward to Zion, that beautiful city of God. Studying this lesson brought tears to my eyes as I thought about God's tender love for Israel. And it's represented in today's lesson as Zion. It reminds me to pray daily for the salvation of Israel. We're continuing the summer quarter and it considers ways that believers are partners with God in creation. Today's Bible study guide about Isaiah's prophecy of restoration for God's people is from Isaiah chapter 49, verses 18 through 23. We'll explore the text with our lesson A. By the end of the lesson, we will identify or analyze relationships in which individuals or congregations have experienced God's restoration, find comfort in the plans God has for our lives, and proclaim God's justice and mercy for his people. We'll study our lesson by discussing what's important to know, cognitive, feel, effective, and do, psychomotor. The first set of verses is Isaiah chapter 49, verses 18 through 20. Look all around you and see, for all your children will come back to you. As surely as I live, says the Lord, they will be like jewels or bridal ornaments for you to display. Even the most desolate parts of your abandoned land will soon be crowded with your people. Your enemies who enslaved you will be far away. The generations born in exile will return and say, we need more room. It's crowded here. <laughs> what a beautiful promise. And the key point is promising restoration. Zion, which is also known as Jerusalem, is personified here as a female, as a woman. She's the bride of God, but she's filled with regret. Zion broke God's heart with her unfaithfulness because she disobeyed God, she worshiped idols, and idols are statues made out of wood and stone. Now she recognizes that her captivity in Babylon is the result of her own poor choices. But because of the Lord's grace and forgiveness, he is promising restoration. Let's read our next verse, which is Isaiah chapter 49, verse 21. Then you will think to yourself, who has given me all these descendants? For most of my children were killed and the rest were carried away into exile. I was left here all alone. Where did all these people come from? Who bore these children? Who raised them for me? The key point is questioning restoration. The image here is of a mother whose children have been taken away from her. All of a sudden, the mother sees herself completely surrounded with more children than she lost. Who's given her all these children? She is overwhelmed with blessings. Let's read our final set of verses from Isaiah chapter 49, 
verses 22 and 23. And again, I'm reading in the New Living Translation. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. See, I will give you a signal to the godless nations. They will carry your little sons back to you in their arms. They will bring your daughters on their shoulders. Kings and queens will serve you and care for all your needs. They will bow to the earth before you and lick the dust from your feet. Then you will know that I am the Lord and those who trust in me will never be put to shame. Oh my, the key point is confirming restoration. God will enlist non-Jewish people or Gentiles to help free the captives. And God will embrace Gentiles into his family and gather them into his arms. Now that we've read the scriptures and mentioned the key points, let me summarize the lesson with what's important to know. Israel is personified as a woman, Zion, who broke God's heart with her unfaithfulness. She worshiped idols, which are statues made out of wood and stone. And God disciplined Zion by allowing her to be in captivity in Babylon. Now, Zion feels the pain of not being in the presence of her Lord. She cries whenever she thinks about her previous life with God. Her tears are dried, however, when she learns that the Lord has not left her permanently. Because of his grace and forgiveness, he is promising restoration. He will give her back everything that was taken from her. God will gather his people together who have been scattered because of the Babylonian captivity, and he will restore the land to such an extent that there will be overpopulation. The image here is of a mother whose children have been taken away from her, and all of a sudden, the mother is completely surrounded with more children than she lost. She's home and she's blessed because she's surrounded by a happy family. Isaiah uses military language to paint the picture and it's this. Just as a general calls the troops together, God will call his people to himself. God will enlist Gentiles to help free the captives and God will adopt Gentiles into his family and gather them into his arms. Gentiles will turn away from worshiping false gods and they will worship the one true and living God. Well, that's what's important to know. How should we feel in response to today's lesson? We should find comfort in the plans God has for our lives. God's people couldn't imagine how much they, he would bless them because they had been so unfaithful. But God forgives and God loves us so much that he surprises us with his blessings. Have you ever experienced God's love in such a way that blew your mind? <laughs> well, what God wants for us is better than anything we can imagine, anything that we can ask or think. We can find comfort in God's plans for our lives and trust him with our futures. That's how we should feel. What should we do with what we just learned? We should proclaim God's justice and mercy for his people, and it doesn't get any more simple than that. As members of God's family, we have a part to play in bringing others to the family of God. In his great commission, Jesus commanded us to go into all the world and make disciples. And this is how we increase the number of people who belong to the family of God. We tell others about God's love and forgiveness. That's our scripture made simple. We identified God's restoration. We find comfort in the plans God has for our lives and we will proclaim God's justice and mercy for his people. Do you remember our key points? Promising restoration, questioning restoration, and confirming restoration? 
God is able to restore more than what we've lost. And when God restores us, we experience prosperity greater than what we could have ever imagined. Oh, and the church said, Amen. What a wonderful prophecy about God's power to restore us for his glory. So I pray that you learn from today's lesson. I want you to know there are more resources to help you as you teach or study. I invite you to subscribe to PreceptsDigital.com. In addition to my teaching, you'll have access to videos like quizzes, lesson plans, the word made simple, teaching tips, and so much more. Won't you join me at PreceptsDigital.com? I look forward to seeing you there. Let's close our lesson with today's keep in mind verse, which is Isaiah chapter 49, verse 23, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Kings and queens will serve you and care for all your needs. They will bow to the earth before you and lick the dust from your feet. And then you will know that I am the Lord. Those who trust in me will never be put to shame. And again, that's Isaiah chapter 49, verse 23, New Living Translation. Child of God, the Lord may discipline us, but he will never abandon us. God is faithful. He'll never leave us, never, ever, ever forsake us. Have a great week. Music